So here we are, I moved into the new house and making progress on my server stack. I'm at the point now where I'm ready to migrate all my VMs off my primary Proxmox server, which is this guy here in the corner, and move it on to my actual permanent Proxmox host that lives in the server rack back there in my server room. So how do we go about doing that? This is when clusters come in handy. There's other reasons, but this is where clusters come in handy. This is my Proxmox server. We can see here it's frosty. We've got our VMs on here. We've got 24 CPUs, 64 gigs of RAM. Everything's good to go. It's up and running. Everything's fine. This is Jack Frost. This is the Proxmox host I built last night. This is our permanent host, 56 CPU, 256 gigs of RAM. And we actually have a lot more storage on here than it shows. We're gonna go ahead and create a cluster. So we'll do this by going to the data center. Under cluster, you can see here we've got one node online. We'll go into cluster. We can do create cluster and name it whatever you want. And we'll name it cluster, create. Ask OK, and she's done. So we can see the cluster name is cluster, and we've got our one node here for now. Now we go back over to our new our new node where we want to join the cluster. We'll come up to data center. We'll go to the cluster options and click join data center. Now from here, we go back to our primary node, hit join information, copy all of this, paste it here, uh, put your root password, drop down to the link number, um, and then hit join cluster. Connection timed out. So if you're like me and you had your entire setup on a completely different network at one time, like another house and you moved into a new location and you're trying to do this, uh, it's likely that your internal IP scheme has changed based on your ISP and however you set it up. So we can see here the join information has my old IP address of this host. And here's how we fix that. We go to the host, we go into shell and we go to, uh, what do we go to? Let's do a clear. So nano, etc. hosts. Now we can see right here, the IP address that's giving us, us issues. So we're gonna change that to the new IP address. Do a reboot. I did all of that on mute, son of a bitch. So we'll bounce the host and we'll see if it comes back up. Don't be a bitch, Frosty. All right, we're coming back up online now. Join information, there we go. Now we've got the correct join information to join our new host to the cluster on our old host. Because if we come over to Frosty, we can see that our second node is here now. Now we've got all our VMs on our current host that we need to migrate off and put onto the new host. Let's get into doing that. The next day. So here we are about a day or so later. I got to stop filming and go hang out with my family for a while, so took advantage of that. Anyway, where were we? I had created a data store or a storage repository previously when the node was on its own, not clustered together. When you cluster nodes, removes any kind of data store that you had. Here's where that data store was. You can see it's under directories for disks that it's not showing up here. So because it was blank, I didn't have anything with it. So what we're gonna do is blow away this data store and just pretty much create it again. The way to do this, which is weird because you should be able to just hit destroy. What is the ID to confirm the data store? Don't know. Don't see a uh, directory ID anywhere and I don't know where to find it. So leave a comment down below if you know where to find that. Here's how I figured this out. We're gonna go into shell. Uh, we're gonna change directory to etc systemd system and we're gonna look for mount that we're looking for is this one right here. We'll do copy and we'll do rm, well, paste, and it's gone. Reload, and it's gone. Simple as that. Now, what we will want to do from here is hit create directory. So yeah, so there's no unused disks, so we'll have to find that disk. So we will do an unmount slash mnt slash pve slash data store. Oh, that's right, it's U-mount, not unmount. Eventually.
Okay, so capitalization matters. Anyway, that's what I did now. I did a thing. Let's go back and now can we wipe this? Yeah, so we can wipe SBD1, create directory with SBD1. Great, we unmounted it. Now we've got it here. This is gonna mount it again. We'll do ext4, data store. Make sure that add storage is checked. Hit create. By default, you can utilize this for all the things, right? Backups, VM disk, container volumes, ISO images, container templates, snippets, and permissions. Now we're gonna migrate our VMs from Frosty to Jack Frost. There's a couple of ways to migrate VMs. You can do them online, you can do them offline. In fact, there's multiple ways that you can migrate VMs, including like doing backups and then restoring that backup. When you migrate a VM that's turned on, you get the opportunity to choose your destination storage path. But doing a live migration can take a very long time. It's kind of nice to have to be able to live migrate VMs on the fly if you've got mission critical stuff that needs to stay online. Things where you can't experience downtime or experience very little downtime. The offline migration, you actually have to have an equivalent named data store on both systems in order to do that offline migration. So for example, this right here, my Unify controller, if I went to migrate target destination of Jack Frost offline mode, I hit migrate. So that took a couple of minutes, Let's see three minutes here. Let's come over to Jack Frost, take a look at, ah, see, so this isn't that big a deal because what it looks like happened is existing storage on the primary, the source node, replicated the directories on the destination node, but they're all living on uh, primary local storage. It's just partitioned it out to match what was already in place. Essentially what I've got is a 300 gig SAS drive in RAID 1 as the first primary storage repository. And then I've got four 300 gig SAS drives in a RAID 0, so a little over a terabyte, or data store. We can see that here, yeah. We got about 1.2 T in data store. What we have uh, provisioned in local provisioning is what, 90 gigs, something? Thin provisioning, we've got the rest of it, almost 200 gigs. All right, so now let's try a live migration of a container that's up and running and move it from one host to another. Just right click on it, go to migrate and target node, Jack Frost. See what happens if we move our flux container. The destination drive is too small. I've got a 250 gig drive on a Linux container. All right, let's try to do with VMs then. I can take this and hit migrate. Target node is Jack Frost. Target storage is gonna be data store and hit migrate. And this is gonna take a while. Two hours later. And the migration is done. The VM has moved over. Took about 15 minutes for the live migration to actually take place. If we go to our node, Tiny10, if we console into it, you can see it's been up the whole time. For VMs, not bad. Power on the VM, do a migration, point the data to where you want it to live, get it to its destination, and then power it off again if you want. Very time consuming that way. Linux containers, you saw that it migrated easily, but you didn't really get to decide where that final data lived. But another way we can move containers from one node to another, I did a backup and restore. Here's how you do that. You're gonna go to your VM, click your backup source. We're gonna hit backup now. We'll move this to the backups directory. ZSTD fast and good mode is gonna be snapshot. You could send an email to yourself when it's, no, when it's done or whatever. I'm just gonna hit backup. Job error, of course. Oh, because it already exists. Got it. Now you need to download a program called WinSCP. Essentially creates like a mini FTP server that you can then transfer files to. Or I guess a better way to look at it would be like SSH with a file explorer. So that's what this is here. Um, you're gonna create a new folder in desktop in your primary workstation, whatever you're working on. And you're gonna sign in to, we'll just do it as a new tab. And we'll sign in as a new tab. See, 192.168.0200. Your fire protocol is gonna be SFTP. The port number is gonna stay the same. Again, it's like SSH. Root is your, is your username. 
and then your super secret password you created. Now it's gonna drop you in the root directory, but that's not where we wanna be. So we're gonna go up one level. We can see here that under documents, I created a backups folder. Anyway, this is a place for temporarily your data is gonna store. The data of the VM that you're moving is gonna store. And the easiest way that I found to find the destination, data center, storage, backups, path is slash home slash backups. So on the source server, we're going to go to home and then backups and the backups are always in the dump folder. There we are, we've got our containers here. So most recent 101 is gonna be 917. Anyway, we're just gonna drag and drop depending on the speed of your connections. This is gonna take about eight minutes, so we'll be back. Later. All right, I finally finished transferring the backup from Frosty to Glacier, my local workstation. Now we can go into Jack Frost. Well, really we do it in the data center. Data store, we can see our path here is MNT PVE data store. So back in WinSCP, we would open a new tab, put in the IP address and all the information to the new host to Jack Frost. Same thing, we'll go up, except this time we're gonna go into MNT because we mounted that data store under PVE data store and dump, literally drag and drop. We'll let this do its thing. It's gonna take another eight or nine minutes or so, so we'll be back. Uh. We've successfully moved the backup file from local storage to the Proxmox host. So now all we gotta do is come down to Jack Frost, data store, uh, we can see LXC 101, and we hit restore. Now we've gotta give it a new unique machine ID. So in this case, we're gonna give it 102. Our storage, we're gonna keep it in data store. Yep, we can see that all the stuff is here uh, as far as the settings and everything. If we wanted, we could override those settings as we're restoring it. So say the server is over provisioned and we just wanna bring it down to two cores. We could do that at the time of restoring the container. All we gotta do is hit restore. This is gonna take some time. It's a 250 gig box. So we're gonna let it do its thing. Got an error message that the checksum didn't match up. I did have a hiccup in the network when transferring the data. So we'll try to transfer the backup file again and restore it from there. Eventually. Well, that sure is interesting to see. This is the error that I got before. Unable to restore failed exit code two. Interesting. Not sure why that happened. Maybe it's because it's an older backup. Try, well, this is my only other one, is Omada. I thought I had that already set up to backup as well. I don't. So that's a good thing that I forgot to enable backups on my only primary software-defined network controller. Let's try this again. We'll hit backup now. Put it in backup, snapshot, fast and good, and go. This is a pretty small VM, so it shouldn't take very long. Backup job finished successfully. One of the cool things about WinSCP is just got these couple of tabs here. Oh, reconnect to the host. Delete that 101. Here we are, 106. We'll drag and drop that bad boy over. This one is much smaller and should be done pretty quickly. No need to pause. There we are. So we go back here to data store under backups. 106 was our VM. We're gonna hit restore. Got to change the VM name or the VNID, so we'll change it to 107. We're going to restore it to data store. Uh, keep all this the same and hit restore. I don't know how long this one's actually going to take, so we shall find out. So it'll work on the controller. It's not working on my Flux LXC. I'm wondering if that's because of the permissions that I put into place uh, when I set it up initially. There we are, we've got our VM. So this is what I'm gonna be doing to migrate my old host to my new host. And when it's all said and done, we can remove the host from the cluster. Let me back up a little bit. Doing the whole backup and restore on another node using WinSCP, you don't have to make a cluster. I went ahead and did it because I'll probably end up adding more nodes to it in the future. So before I go and do this, I'm actually gonna go in and move the rest of my VMs off of Frosty and into Jack Frost, the ones that I wanna keep at least. One million zillion jillion dillion cotillion times later. Now we're ready to remove the first node out of our two node cluster. So we're essentially left with a cluster of one. 
Here's how we do that. We're gonna log into the node that we wanna keep. In our case, it's Jack Frost. Open a shell, come in here and type PVECM nodes. This will give us the list of nodes. Next, we need to power down the first node or remove it from the network, essentially. I'm just gonna do a hard shutdown on the box. All right, so all together, I pulled the NIC and I pulled the power cord, so it definitely isn't going to be seen on the network. Uh, <laughs> that's funny, because I was connected to it through the first node. Son of a... The next evening... All right, kids, did you see what I did wrong there? You can see by the IP address, I was actually logged into Frosty, but I was accessing Jack Frost through Frosty. We're actually going to log into Jack Frost, and we're going to do that process all over again. PVECM Dell node Frosty. You might run into this. So this happens because each node gets one vote. And if there's not enough votes, it's gonna say that it doesn't it doesn't have a quorum, it doesn't have a majority vote, it's not gonna let you delete the node. Because the node that's being deleted isn't gonna have a vote in this. So we could do PVECM status. Yeah, PVECM status. Yeah, so here we can see expected votes are two. We're gonna to wanna to change that to one. PVECM expected one. PVECM Dell node one or Frosty. Killing node one. Now, PVECM nodes, we can see node ID is two. Jack Frost is the only node in our cluster. Now, if we go through and hit a refresh, uh, Frosty's here. How do we get rid of Frosty? Okay, so that didn't remove the previous node from the list. So we're going to shell in to the existing node. We'll go to ETC, PVE, nodes do an ls and we'll do another one in there oh that's right because i spelled it wrong the first time rm dash r frosty there we go do rm dash r forsty as well we'll just get that out of there so it looks like all we're left with is jack frost i wonder if a refresh didn't even need to reboot so what did we do today we successfully created a cluster between an existing Proxmox node and a new node we spun up. That's gonna be our new permanent node, Jack Frost. He's nipping at your nose, you know. We created a data store on the local host, Jack Frost, and migrated VMs and data to the new data store, confirmed that they're in working order, killed the old node, and then removed it from the cluster and removed it from the directories. Easy peasy, right? It only took me a week to make it happen. I'm just kidding, but it was like three days. Yeah, so there we are. Now that we're running on Jack Frost, we can go ahead and set up a more permanent solution with shared storage and backups on a SAN. This way, as we spin up more servers in the future or more nodes and add them to clusters, we'll have shared storage that we can play with instead of doing this local moving crap. If you made it this far in the video and you learned something today, hit that thumbs up button. It really helps the channel and I appreciate it. If these are the kind of videos that you like to see, consider subscribing to the channel for more stuff like it. And of course, thanks for watching.